Welcome to ABCD on BNN. My name is Eric Mitchell and I'm your host. Today we're going to be talking with Michelle McCarthy of the ABCD Housing Department and she is a family court advocate. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Can you just talk about your role mm -hmm. at ABCD Housing? I assist people in when they're being evicted from their homes. People can call in to the housing department and seek some assistance from um, myself or another of the advocates there who deal with housing court issues and eviction proceedings. Is it always about an eviction process? It's almost always something related to an eviction process. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't call in just asking about their rights as a tenant, which is something that I would love more people to call in and, and talk to me about. But really at this point, it's people calling in when they've fallen behind in their rent, or they've gotten an eviction notice for non-payment of rent, or a court notice to appear in housing court. People are at risk of engaging in the court process in terms of eviction. It starts with receiving a 14 or 30 day notice. It's a legal document that's provided by the landlord that says you have 14 days to quit and deliver up is the technical language that's used. It's basically saying you can either pay this rent uh, that you owe me within 14 days from receiving this notice or you can leave. The tenant, it's misleading because the tenant doesn't have to leave after 14 days. Uh, what the 14 day notice does is it allows the tenant or the landlord after the 14 days have elapsed to then file a complaint in court saying that the, the tenant has violated the lease and should be evicted from the premises. The judge will decide whether or not the tenant has to leave the, the property. When that happens, something called an eviction execution is issued. When that happens, that is a legal document that is, can be given to the sheriff, and the sheriff can then come within 48 hours or after 48 hours have expired to move the tenant out. What is it in the day of a life of a, a housing court advocate? I feel like a lot of my job is to just let tenants know what their rights are, that they have the right to speak up in court, they have the right to talk to their landlord. And when a person goes to housing court, they're not going to expect to really interact with the judge in a courtroom. Boston Housing Court has done a great job at encouraging people to um, engage in a mediation process. I just work with clients to prepare them to mediate their disputes with their landlord, you know, make their demands, whatever they are, because it can't hurt to ask. Going to a courthouse is like going to the state house. If you haven't really been in before and gotten comfortable, it can be very intimidating. Mm -hmm. How Can you talk a little bit about that process? You first have to check in with the court, which involves going into the courtroom and declaring that you're there. Mm -hmm. and Present. Present, and it's usually present and that you request mediation. I'd say 98% of the cases at housing court on any given Thursday go to mediation, and the, the housing court really encourages that. A person who's never been in housing court before, who doesn't know what their landlord or their landlord's lawyer looks like because they've only dealt with someone in their management office can really be lost and end up spending a lot of time waiting around and looking for the right people. The advocate's role, just simply connecting people in housing court is, is a valuable one, let alone negotiating, trying to connect people with financial assistance to pay their back rent, helping people transition from their present housing into something post-eviction if eviction can't be prevented. Well, as a housing court advocate, you're talking about the advocacy program. How does someone get involved in the program? How do you, how do you become my advocate? <laughs> well, it can happen a number of ways. The majority of clients are self-referrals, so that means calling in to our office, doing a short screening about some basic information, such as you know the usual information, demographic information, name, address, telephone number. Uh, we also ask information about gross monthly income mm -hmm. and rent whether or not a person's on a subsidy and how much there might be behind in rent, as well as what stage they might be in in the eviction process. So uh, self-referral even, is it a phone call mm -hmm. or is it dropping into the office? Do you need an appointment? Either one. Um, generally, to receive services from me, I have to do an intake interview because it's, you know, we're dealing with a court proceeding. I would hate to just meet you so in the court has to be courtroom. Up with face, face right. Time, face time. Um, I mean, I do meet up with people in court who uh, will quickly discuss their situation and try to at least delay their court case for two weeks to give us a little bit more time to strategize on how the person can remain in their unit. Um, but a walk-in or a phone call for at least doing the initial screening is fine. Um, many times I will have you know, a 15 minute window to talk to a person who walks in uh, and either do a very, very quick intake or schedule time for a more thorough intake. But an intake is required. We have to collect certain documentation, everything like that, to make sure, you know, since the eviction process can be complicated, as we discussed, right. that a person truly does have a court date and they didn't just receive some notice written by their landlord that, you know, implies that they have to go to court or leave their apartment, that it's an official 14-day notice, it's official summons to court, you've signed a court agreement and not just some periphery agreement with your landlord. All of what you're saying is critical. You know, you know food, clothing, and shelter are just some of the basics mm -hmm. um, of, of living, of, of having a living. And so 
going to court and dealing with the eviction process is one part of the housing um, formula. Mm -hmm. What about some of the other things that the housing department does? And how often is the housing search workshop held and where is it held? It's held the third Wednesday of every month generally at 105 Chauncey Street uh, in the basement, same building as the housing department. The next workshop I believe is June 19th okay. from 10 to about 1.30. And like I said, the first part is information about what kind of housing options are available. And then mm -hmm. the second part is filling out those applications. So it's about an hour and a half of application filling out is what it comes down to. With Two support. To With support, right. If you're someone who lacks appropriate immigration status for a particular unit, you're not wasting your time filling out an application for that unit. Because or, you need to do something else as right. well. Okay. Or, you know, if you're over income for a certain unit, you're not wasting your time with that application either. So we try to target application to applicant. Make it fit. So Michelle, we're running out of time and I have to say that I certainly have learned a lot about housing and how to get support for housing Great. and what ABCD does for housing and I hope and I know that our audience has as well. I really thank you for coming on. And so um, this is the ABCD program at BNN. We've been talking with Michelle McCarthy about the housing department at ABCD. With that, Thank you for tuning to the ABCD segment on BNN. My name is Eric Mitchell.